This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's episode of Inkscape Explained, I'm going to be going over nodes and paths and the Bezier pen in Inkscape. And particularly what I'm talking about is this tool here, the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And when it comes to vector graphics, nodes are the framework of any vector graphic. When you're using something like GIMP or Photoshop, you're working with uh, rasterized graphics, which are comprised of pixels. Whereas with vector graphics, when you're using something like Inkscape or Illustrator or CorelDRAW, you're, using, you're creating graphics that are made out of mathematical equations, which give you uh, different anchor points known as nodes, which I'm going to demonstrate for you here. So let me get started here. Let me open up my line of distribute and my path and stroke menu. And I'm just going to create a polygon. I'm going to create a polygon and I'm going to create a circle and I'll take these and I'll bring the opacity down and I'm going to duplicate this one and give this one a, a stroke so I'll give that a red outline and so what we're going to start out with here is uh, the edit paths by nodes tool up here now this is the heart and soul of a vector of, of vector graphics because it shows you the framework of how a vector graphic is constructed. So let me click on this with the with the uh, with the edit paths by nodes tool. And there's nothing here. There's no nodes or anchor points here. Well, except for this one right here, because uh, Inkscape still recognizes this as a star or polygon. So I'm going to go to path, object to path, and now you're going to see we have all of these nodes here that comprise this graphic. Okay. So let me do the same with the rest of this stuff here. Let me do the uh, convert all of this to a path. I'll go to path object to path and now we should have nodes on every one of these graphics like if I click on this circle here we now have all of these nodes that this graphic is comprised of which we can edit and manipulate however we'd like as you can see there so um, up here in this toolbar you'll have all these little options on how to um, you know further manipulate these nodes so let me start by showing you this the first one up here insert new nodes into selected segments so let me click on this polygon right here and you notice we have our nodes if I select that node and then hold shift and select that node so we have them both selected I can insert a new node halfway between those points using this tool right here I'll click that insert new nodes into selected segments I'll click on that and there I have a new node to play with so I could further manipulate this graphic and it works uh, the, it, it works the other way around as well. If you select all of these nodes and select insert new nodes, you get a whole bunch of new nodes in there. And you can click it again and again and again, and you could create just tons and tons of nodes, however much your heart desires. So let me undo all of that. And uh, we'll go over to the next one. Delete selected nodes. Okay, this one works the same way as this tool does, but in reverse. So if I click on just this node right here and press delete, it deletes that node, and it kind of automatically generated curves based on that uh, where the where the uh, the anchor point was, and it gives me these handles that I could play with and you know manipulate however I like. So I'll undo all of that. The next tool is join selected nodes. So let's say I take this node here and then hold Shift and take that node there, so I have them both selected. I'll click on join selected nodes, and it joined them together into one point. So that's how that tool works. The next one here, uh, break path at selected nodes. This one's interesting. Okay, so I'll click on this one here, this, uh, this polygon with the uh, stroke around. And I'm going to use this one because the stroke helps further illustrate how this works. If I click on those two nodes right there, click and drag over both of those. And if I go to, what was that, break path at selected nodes, I'll click on that. It broke the path, it broke it up into separate segments. So you see we now have these separate objects that we could play with however we'd like. And let me show you another way that works. Um, I'll click on just that node and I'll click on break path at selected nodes. And you can't see it but there's now two different nodes there. And it kind of broke it up. And let me turn the fill off to show you. It gave you a, a starting point and an end point for the uh, graphic as, as opposed to previously where it was all one fluid joined uh, object. So that's what that tool does. And the next one here, join selected ed nodes with a new segment. So this takes two nodes, like 
Uh, well, actually two or more. I'm going to select these two nodes right here, and then I'll hold Shift and click on that on that one, so I have all three of them selected. And if I click on this, join selected end, end nodes with the new segment, it joined them all together with one straight line like that. And that's kind of similar to how the delete selected nodes works. But when you do when you when you use um, delete selected nodes, it it automatically generates curves there. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to have a straight line, you could use that tool right there. Uh, where was that? Delete select uh, segment between two non endpoint nodes. So that's what that does. That's how that works. And the next thing we have here, make selected nodes a corner. Okay, so there's really two main different types of nodes you'll have, a corners and smooth nodes. On this polygon, this node here is a corner, whereas on this circle here, this node is a curve because there's two different, you know what, I have to convert that to a path, uh, path, object to path, okay. So this node here is a curve. It get, when you click on it, it gives you these handles that you could play with. Now if I want to turn that into a corner, I could just click on that and it turned it into a corner meaning I could take this handle and bring this in and take that handle and bring that in and you can make like kind of like a water drop I guess let me undo that that's how that works you know what I gotta undo that again okay so the next one here make selected nodes smooth okay this works the same way as the corner one but just in reverse you could take a corner node and make that smooth just like that and you could take this and play with that and you know move it around however you'd like and the next one here makes selected nodes symmetric okay so this is different I'm gonna do this I'm gonna leave that how it is right now and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click on make selected nodes symmetric now these two look very similar but the difference between the two of them is this one here is not symmetric meaning I could take this handle and move it in and take this handle and move it out whereas this node here is locked for it to be symmetric. So if I take this node and pull it out, the other the other handle scales accordingly. So it ensures that this node remains symmetric. Okay, so let me undo all of that. Uh, we'll see what the next one is here. Make selected nodes auto smooth. Okay, now auto smooth is very similar to make node make selected nodes smooth. Uh, I'll I'll do, go back to this. I'll make this one smooth, and then I'll make this one auto smooth. Okay, with this one here, if you notice the difference in appearance, this node up here is a square, whereas this node down here is a circle. The circle means the node is auto smooth, meaning it locks it. Well, you know what? If you click and move the handle, it automatically turns it into just a regular smooth node. You notice it turns back into a square if I do that. It's a circle there, and now it's back to a square. And with this one here, this one's just a regular curve. Or if this one, whereas this one here is auto smooth, and I'm not really quite sure what the difference between the two of those is. I've never really found myself in a position where I needed one and not the other, or the other way around. But that's what that is, and that's what it does. So let me undo that. Uh, this one here makes selected segments lines. If I click and drag over those top nodes up there, I'll click on this make selected segments lines. Oh, you know what? I have to do this in a circle. I'll click over those two right there. Make that, a, make that a line. It creates a line, a straight line out of those, the, the, uh, the space between those two segments. And the same works uh, for this one here, which is the same thing but in reverse. Make selected segments curves. If I click on this, and then I click and drag over those two right there, and I can make that a curve, the only thing that happened was it gave me these... Nothing happened to the overall appearance of the graphic, but it gave me these nodes or these handles rather that I could take and play with and move around like that and uh, you know manipulate the shape uh, you know the edge of the shape accordingly so uh, the next thing here convert selected objects to a path this is pretty much the same thing as path object to path and the same thing with this one here convert selected object stroke to a path which is the very same thing as path stroke to path and I'll show you here Let's say we have, um, let me create a square. Let's say we have a square like that. I'll just make that black. And I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And there's really uh, no nodes for us to work with. We have this, the uh, square or rectangle nodes where we can change the corners. If I click on this, 
it turns it right into a path. Just like that. So it's the same thing as going to path, object to path. If we go to path, object to path, the same thing happens. So I really don't really um, have much of a use for that one. Uh, and the same thing with this one. Convert selected, convert selected um, uh, object stroke to path. So click on that. And now we have the stroke converted to a path, which again is the same thing as path, stroke to path. So that's what those two things to, uh, do there. And of course we have our X and Y axis. If I take this node here, I could change the x-axis, bring that to the left by bring it down, or bring that to the right by you know, clicking up. Same thing with the y-axis, I could bring that down by clicking down, bring it up by clicking up, and the unit of measurement here, which is pixels. And this here, show clipping path of selected objects. Okay, so this, this is for, um, this is for when you're working with a clip. And a clip is uh, pretty much something, to, it has to do with raster images. Let me just import an image in here so I could show you, because I could show you better than I can explain it. So I'm going to hit Control I, I'm going to import an image of a cat. I have this image of a cat here, and I'll take this circle and I'll duplicate that, and I'll put that on the over the cat, and I'll scale this up. Let me turn that red just to ensure that you can see it, or green or blue, green works. Uh, so I have this circle over the cat. If I select both of those objects and I go to Object, Clip, Set, it takes the object and grabs the image of the cat within um, the boundaries of that shape that I clipped it with. So this is what's considered a clip here. And if I go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, let me make sure that's converted first, and I'll click on this tool right here, Show Clipping Path of Selected Objects. I'll click on that there we have our nodes right there. So I could take this node and bring that in like that or bring that out. Or I could take this node and I can make that a corner and play with it like that. And that's pretty much what the purpose of that is. And the next one here, show masks of selected objects. I'm really not sure what this does. I've tried it and I, well, I know what it does in theory. It, does, it just doesn't work on my system for some reason and I've never had a, no, I've never had a use for this tool. So. Uh, I can't really tell you what that one does. Uh, let me go back to this. This one here, show next editable path effect parameter. I'm not sure what that is either. I don't know how to activate that tool. I'm sure if I looked it up and read through the uh, documentation on Inkscape, I could find it, but I've never found myself needing something like that. This one here is really interesting. Show transformation handles for selected nodes. Now let me take this, make a duplicate copy of that one. If I go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and we have all of our nodes and I select it, it highlights. Let me select these three actually. If I select them all, they all highlight. But if I click on this, show transformation handles, it gives me handles that I could scale just like when we're using the select tool and scaling objects. I could hold control and shift and scale that in like that. And that's really cool, it's really useful. This is something I use a lot. And again, just like the select tool, if I click on that node again, it gives me rotation handles where I could rotate it around like that. Let me zoom out to show you. You know, you could rotate it around like that, or you could slide it over like this. And I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. So I'll just go and turn that off for now. And the next one here, which is show path outline with path effect. So if I click on that, um, you'll see we have our nodes. If I turn that on, it just gives us a red outline that we can see going around the edge of the graphic, which um, I guess it's just a matter of personal preference. I personally don't like having the red outline on. I can see it being useful if you're working with uh, two different colors on top of each other. Like let's say I wanted this to be a, a white circle for whatever reason. I'll bring that up and I'll make that white. And I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And you'll see it puts a red outline around it so I can actually see what I'm doing. But uh, it's not something I use often. Make that black again, bring that down. And we have this one here. Uh, show Bezier handles with selected nodes. You're going to want that turned on. If you turn that off, it gets rid of those handles on curved nodes. So you can't really see, you can't really play with the nodes other than clicking on the actual edge and, and moving it. But if you turn that on, it shows the handles. So you can, you, can, you can grab them and use them, pull them out, rotate it around. So I really don't know why you wouldn't want this turned on, but uh, they give you an option to turn that off if you like. So that's how all of that works. And another thing I wanted to go over is the Align and Distribute menu because uh, you could align and distribute nodes just like you can objects. So let me go back to uh, 
the uh, edit paths by nodes and I'll click on this if I select these three nodes right here I can click this button to align them all on a common horizontal line like that and it puts them all in the same horizontal plane and I can do the same thing with the vertical uh, align selected nodes to a common vertical line and it lines them all up on a vertical plane like that and with this one right here you can distribute, uh, I'll start with this one actually, distribute selected nodes horizontally. This pretty much spaces all the nodes out evenly. So if I have, if I have this node here, and I have that node up here, and this one up here, you'll notice that this node is closer to this one than it is to this one. But if I want them to all be spaced out evenly, I can click on that, and I can click on distribute selected nodes vertically, and it spaces them all out equally. And the same thing is true for the other one. So uh, let me pull this one over here. If you notice, this node is closer to this one than this one is to this one. So if I can click on, if I click and drag over all three of those, I can space those nodes out evenly on the uh, horizontal plane. Then I can space them out evenly on the vertical plane. So that's pretty much how all of that works. So um, that's the uh, the basics of the edit paths by nodes tool. Now if I go to the Bezier pen, which is right here. And if you're not using this icon pack that I created for Inkscape, your Bezier pen icon is going to look a lot different. You could just press B on the keyboard to grab it. And what the Bezier pen is, it pretty much just allows you to create uh, um, objects based on where you want the, uh, the node points to be. So you see I just created that object there. And I could turn that red or you know do whatever I want with that. And the same thing is true. Um, if you just want to create a line like that, you click enter and there you have a little line like that. And you could even, if you click and drag, it'll let you create curved nodes like that. You create like a little spiral or something and then click enter. And there you have that. And um, let me go back to the Bezier pen. This option here, create spiral path. This pretty much lets you create spiral paths and if you click enter it gives you those paths with auto smooth nodes instead of just regular smooth nodes so it creates a more fluid and you know a more fluid and nicer looking shape so we'll get rid of that I'll go back to the uh, the pen this one here create a sequence of straight line segments this works the same way as the uh, the regular way only it doesn't let you create curves if you click and drag it, it confines you to straight lines like that which is, um, um, I don't know, in my opinion, it's, it's pretty useless because you can just do that with the regular pen. I guess if you just want to ensure that you don't accidentally create something a curve, I guess it's good. But otherwise, I don't really use that. And the same thing with this tool right here. Create a sequence of par uh, paraxial line segments. This pretty much just locks the lines that you can create to either the vertical or the horizontal axis. You can make them going uh, horizontal or vertical, but you can't make them going diagonal. It locks it to the X and Y axis. So that's what all of that does. I'll delete that. Um, let me put this mode back here. But like I said, this is the mode I use more than anything. I very, very rarely use these. In fact, I know for a fact that I've never used either of these two. And this one is useful for, for different things, but generally I like to work with just the regular create regular Bezier path option. And up here, we can choose the shape that we use. If we have none selected, which is the default, it just creates a regular stroke like that. But if we choose triangle in, we can create a triangle and press enter. It took a triangle and stretched it out in the shape of the path that we just drew. And the same thing for triangle out. Triangle out, I'll go and draw that same shape again. It did the same thing, only it started with the point of the triangle and ended with the base of the triangle, whereas this one started with the base of the triangle and ended with the uh, point of the triangle. So that's what that option does. Um, what else do we have? Ellipse. It does the same thing as the triangle, only it creates an ellipse instead of a triangle. Go ahead and click, and there we have an ellipse. It doesn't look like an ellipse, but it, it technically is. It gets fatter at the center than it does at the edges. And if you zoom all the way in, you can see it has a curved uh, node, just like an ellipse would. So that's another thing you can use. And that's what I like to use to create, like, um, whenever I'm doing line art logos. Like, I, the, I made a tutorial a while back uh, about creating line art logos. And for that, I used, I believe I used the ellipse with the spiral path. 
and that's pretty much how that works. So um, I guess you know that's that's useful sometimes. I think it looks pretty nice when you want to create like a nice looking fluid line instead of just a, a straight abrupt line like that. And finally, we have from clipboard, and this is interesting too. Let me create a custom shape here. I'm just gonna create some random custom shape, and I have like this little eye shape here, and I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. I'm gonna go, to, I'm gonna right click that and go to copy, and I'll go back to the Bezier pen, and I have from clipboard selected. If I go and click and create a shape, it's gonna take that shape and stretch it out in the shape of the path that I drew which I think is pretty interesting. If you go back to uh, one of my other older tutorials from a few months ago where I showed you how to create a flame icon, I used that technique uh, from using the From Clipboard um, option. So that's what that does. And uh, I think that pretty much covers, I think that pretty much covers both of those tools. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how nodes and paths and, and the Bezier pen works in Inkscape. But if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.